Well, thank goodness the Tigers won tonight. Otherwise, this evening would have been a total disaster. Uh, the thing a lot of us were really looking forward to tonight was the NBA draft lottery. It did not go the Pistons. Well, actually, I think they spelled Pistons wrong there with, with the number one slot. That looks a lot to me like Spurs. That can't be the way it went. The Pistons had the worst record in the NBA this season. 14% chance it landed the top pick. They fall all the way to fifth, the lowest they could possibly drop in the NBA draft lottery. And with an audible groan, we welcome in Pistons analyst Greg Kelser. Greg, this was was not what we had hoped for. Uh, I, I'm sure the Pistons will try to put a positive spin on this in the hope that they will find a good player there at, at number five, and they very well could. But uh, your overall reaction to the way the ping pong balls fell tonight? You know, I feel like you 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 wait in line for an hour and a half to get on that roller coaster that everybody's been talking about. And then you get on the doggone thing, in two minutes it's over, and now you're like, is that all? Well, sort of how I feel tonight, a little deflated for sure. Yeah, it didn't feel like the roller coaster even got a chance to take off tonight. <laughs> I don't think we got to enjoy the ride uh, at all. Uh, we saw a lot of bad basketball this season with the hope that there would be some reward for the Pistons here, and, and not that getting the fifth pick isn't a reward, but it's not the one the Pistons were after. Well, when the odds say that you have a 14% chance along with two other teams. Yeah. You feel pretty good about maybe the chance of landing at least one of the top three spots, obviously falling the five. Now, if it wasn't this year with this player, Victor Vembanyama, at the top, yeah. you might not feel so bad. But, you know, from what we hear, this is a generational franchise saving, changing type of athlete that you certainly would have wanted. Um, but, you know, when reality sets in, you'll realize that there still are some good players to be drafted and the Pistons got a pretty good one last year at five and, and hopefully that'll be the same thing coming up. They'll get a good player and hopefully they're ready to make some sort of turn of the corner to start winning ball games. And I don't think there's any more, you know, positioning for draft picks uh, in the future. I, I think it's time to start really trying to win games in as many as possible. Uh, what might be some of the options for the Pistons at five? And, and certainly we wouldn't pass, put it past Troy Weaver to try to make some sort of deal to perhaps move up even higher in the draft should they so choose. Well, after the seven foot four, Victor Wembanyama, look at all those heights, six nine, and then it goes, you know, pretty much between six two and six nine. This is what the NBA is now. It's a, a, a league of shooting guards, shooting forwards, athleticism, wing players, and, and that's what you see there. Those, those two guys right there in the middle, Eamon and Oscar Thompson, those are twins, by the way. Yep. Both are really good ball handlers, athletic. Both need to work on their outside shots. And I heard what they said near the end of that draft, projecting that the Pistons might be interested in Walker from uh, Houston. Walker's kind of a burly power forward type, probably better defensively than he is offensively, offensively right now. But, you know, again, there'll be, a, there'll be a good player there at five, and hopefully he's, like, one of the best players in this draft. <laughs> That's right. Uh, all right, well, I guess up next with the Pistons is finding a head coach. What's the latest in regards to that search? Well, you know, I'm like everybody else. We've heard the names that yeah. have surfaced, that were surfacing as the leading candidates before the barrage of high-powered, big-name coaches that have fallen like Doc Rivers and – and and uh, Monty Williams, Monty Williams, Mike Budenholzer. Yeah. Uh, you know these are guys now that are probably going to ascend to the top of, you know, some of these teams' wish wish lists that that are that have coaching vacancies. Um, but we had heard Kevin Ollie, and we'd heard Jaron Collins, and the uh, assistant coach Lee at at uh, at uh, Milwaukee. So, you know, it, it, again, I don't know where this is going to all go, but I do know that whoever lands the Pistons' uh, uh, coaching spot will have a lot of the, the, the hard, thankless work already done by Dwayne Casey. Right. Before we let you go, I, can, we get, can I get a hug? Come on, I, I, need, a, I need a hug. We need, a, need, we need to commiserate a little bit. <laughs> uh, okay, as, as Greg and I console each other, we're going to take you to break, but we, we, will, revel, we will revel in the 